Ladies and gentlemen, it's currently January 2023, and the chess world is in a craze. And that craze is named the Mittens Chessbot. And you might be asking yourself, is this another video milking mittens for views? And the answer to your question is yes, absolutely. And not only is it a video milking mittens, in this video, I am also milking the existence of Magnus Carlsen. Shocking, the two most popular entities in all of chess. But Magnus has declined politely to play against the mittens bot. And the reasoning is as follows. This is the command on Magnus's Twitch channel, Moskinism, and it says, to play chess is to engage in a dance of the mind, a test of wit and strategy. The challenge of outmaneuvering a living, thinking opponent is what gives the game its depth and meaning, and to resort to play ga playing against a faceless, soulless machine is to deprive oneself of the rich human experience that chess has to offer. I therefore refuse to play the mittens bot, for to do so would be to diminish the very essence of the game that I hold dear. Wow. Powerful stuff from the greatest chess player of all time. Which is why, in this video, I took the Magnus Carlsen bot. Okay? If we can't get the live version of Magnus, we are going to get the AI Play Magnus version, the most sophisticated version of Magnus, also rated far into the 3000s with its own playing style, unique uh, opening repertoire, and so on. And we're going to pair it against Mittens. I had no idea what to expect. And folks, dear God, these two played two games and combined reached about 250 moves. I mean, it was literally like the world was ending and the last two robots alive were fighting for evil and good. So give me a little bit of your time. I hope you enjoy. I'm going to break these games down for you. Um, spectacular stuff. So the first game gets going and Magnus Bot really likes the English. It's one of the most imbalanced openings that exists. Uh, Mittens plays C6. This is an invitation to play Slav defense positions. Uh, d4, d5, and, you know, you get your uh, Zhiguli, you get your Didas, and so on, and you really turn into a, a Slavic uh, individual. Now we have e3. This is a move order that delays the move d4 and wants to recapture the pawn with the bishop, but doesn't always want to put the pawn here. White waits in many situations, uh, but after bishop f5, white uh, can continue to uh, delay this move d4. In fact, uh, the, the Magnus bot does in fact delay the move d4. It takes on d5 and immediately takes advantage of the departure of the bishop from the defense of the b7 pawn. Now, according to theory, the most common move in this position is actually to retreat back to c8. <laughs> I know, it looks completely idiotic, but the point is that black basically says, well, your queen is stupid here. Like, my bishop was supposed to be here anyway. Um, in this game, uh, all hell breaks loose already on move 6. So... Mittens gives away the b7 pawn. Completely. Not only does Mittens give away the b7 pawn, Magnus bot doesn't even choose to castle or anything. Magnus just goes for it. Knight b5, this is like how beginners play chess. And black needs to prevent knight c7 by playing this move. Mittens bot is two pawns down in the first ten moves of this game. What? It's just down two pawns. It has five pawns left, and Magnus bot has seven. It's like, Stockfish is looking at this going, what the, these are my offspring? Like, really? So now Mittens kicks out the queen and Magnus dances around and his idea, well, the bot's idea is to bring the queen back to the B3 square. And folks, when I say that I don't understand how at all there is any compensation for these two pawns, I'm not the only one. Stockfish is sitting there going, it's two pawns. That's why the evaluation is basically two. It's 1.99, right? That's two. Uh, what black is going to rely on in this game is activity and the rooks are going to stare down at these two pawns and just basically make it difficult for them to move because if one moves it weakens the other something is also smudging my eyeglasses so I'm going to wipe that off very quickly life of people who have eyeglasses any of you get LASIK surgery? everybody recommends that to me but I'm terrified of that just sitting there just oh god D4, queen c8, knight e4, and as I said, Mittens bot is going to um, develop its pieces very quickly here and, uh, well, try to get some sort of counterplay. Now, Magnus bot attacks with a4, obviously, because it has two extra pawns. Might as well move those pawns. If that pawn ever makes it to a5, a6, it's going to be seriously bad news for Mittens. So, Mittens plays queen b7, queen e2, rook b8, and the second that the Magnus bot comes back looking to just trade pieces, that's all it wants. I mean, Magnus bot just wants to trade, and you can't take because of rook b1. 
And I mean, at some point, I'm just going to play B4 and B5 and... You gave me two damn pawns, like, what did you expect to happen? I'm gonna push them, and as I push them, I'm gonna take your space away, and as I take your space away, your pieces are gonna get trapped, and then I'm gonna win. So Mitten's bot is like, alright, I'm having an existential crisis here, so let me, you know, shave my head and get a, a, a scorpion tattoo, like, you know, Cheeto Vera. E5, it's trying to just blow the center of the board up. We have takes, takes, I mean, Magnus bot is like, bro, I got an A pawn, I'm just gonna push it. Stockfish didn't like that. Um, in fact, I think somewhere here, Stockfish wanted white to keep the tension more. Instead of that, Magnus bot tries to kind of clarify right away, and it gets even crazier. Knight c5 here is a, bl is a blunder or a giveaway of yet another pawn. I mean, knight c5, bishop takes h7 from Magnus bot, king h7, queen h5 check. When I saw this, I was like, the game is over. Magnus bot is literally up three pawns. How is this game not completely over? Because it's bots, damn it. Any human here loses with black. I mean, it's six to three. Like, it's, it, it's over. It's three pawns. Nobody comes back from three pawns down. There's no, there's no obvious weaknesses in the white position. Do you know what the weaknesses of the white position are? I'll tell you right now. The light squares. And because the light squares are so weak in the white position, the black pieces are able to infiltrate faster, which in turn makes it very difficult for white to defend all of their pieces because the light squares are weak and the pieces are sort of stuck back home. This game is crazy. This game is absolutely nuts. So queen c8 back, all right? And now the best move here for white is to play rook a3, trying to win back equity on the light squares. Bishop b5 is trying to get knight to d3 or attack this rook. So all of a sudden, Magnus bot has no advantage despite being three pawns up. I mean, this is nuts. And Stockfish is looking at this like, damn, Mittens? Mittens is a good defender. Rook c3, bishop f1. Magnus is only up one point of material now. And I, I mean, I, he, Mittens got the rooks too. Rook b5 on the way. e4 with the idea to play rook to g3. The knight goes back. The bishop comes out. And now we enter this phase of the game. This is the end game, all right? Magnus bot is still up three pawns. That means white has to be better. And the more pieces that get traded here, probably chances increase that white wins. You have to understand, in any end game, you got to simplify things down. You trade the knights and the queens, bishop and two pass pawns, and the king coming this way, rook can't deal with that. Rook can barely deal with like a bishop and one pawn. Connected pawns, both defended, king is coming, probably bad news. Not to mention that it... White also has a three on two on this side. I mean, imagine three pawns spread out. No, it's, it's bad. So I was absolutely floored when in this position, Mittens bot gave away its knight to win this one. I was like, no, it's over. I mean, this is, Magnus himself would win this position, I think against, well, Mittens probably, but not Stockfish. Uh, I mean, this has to be winning for White. And Mittens goes here blocking this bishop and making sure the king can sort of always dance around checks. And folks, now we enter the most unreal endgame I I've seen in a while. This pawn is white's shining piece of, like, gold. Maybe this pawn will join, but I don't know how that's gonna happen. But black has a permanent eye on a6, and at the same time, black is just avoiding checks. Black is happy with the draw, make no mistake. But the white king walks out, checks continue, all right, now, now look at the white king. The white king is constantly getting shielded by the pawns on the queen. He's safe, right? Mittens is just repeating moves and basically just, look, h4. I mean, just trying to make a little bit of progress. Blocking with the queen again. Checks, checks. Queen c5, not trading queens. We know that black does not want a queen trade. All right, rook h1. And when the engines got tired of their shuffling, right? I mean, it's white is just trying to look for progress. White played f4. I mean, white is always looking for progress. Look at this. What is happening here? Queen b1, queen h5. And then this was the moment I was like, oh, it's over. B4. Magnus bot just played b4. It found a way to push. And then not only does it find a way to push, it starts sacrificing all of its pawns. Magnus bot walks its king into the center and plays b5. I'm like, oh, the game is over. But look at the eval. It's zeros. I'm like, oh, this has to be the end of the game. I mean, it's going to find a way to safeguard its king. Magnus bot did it. It pushed its pawns. But no, I was wrong. I was naive. The king is forced to the back rank and desperately in need of defense. Check. King e3. Rook b3 looks like it wins a queen, but it doesn't. If black trades the queens, look at this. If black trades the queens, the pawn sneaks through. The pawn sneaks through. It doesn't quite promote, but it's good enough because it makes it really far and it's going to be impossible to deal with the consequences of this. So queen g1. Folks, the Magnus bot 
was paralyzed on the back rank. Look at this. How has White not made it here? Because White is a bot. And White just is able to thwart off all of the invasion. Queen d1. Look at... Look at this defending. Now, Stockfish with black here does find some very obscure ways of, like, putting the rook and putting the queen. It was a very back-and-forth battle. But both sides were unable to fully and convincingly break through. And ultimately what happens, a hundred moves into this game, is that the Black King now goes for a run. They don't want to repeat moves. They chuck all of their pawns. And what ends up happening, oh, after a hundred moves of this game, is that the F6 pawn falls, which means the end game is Rook versus Bishop. They played this out for 50 more moves. This is a drawn end game, but the way in which you uh, try to beat somebody is you basically try to pin them on the first rank. The rook would beat the bishop by pinning them on the first rank, and they have to try to get them to the wrong corner. So there are ways to create checkmate threats on a person and also try to like win like this, but it's very, very tough, and you should run your king to the corner opposite color of your bishop, so your bishop is always a shield, right? That's what white did, and the game ended in an insane 120-move marathon draw. I mean, it could have probably gone even longer. Unreal game. I mean, look at this position. The White King dancing around. Look at probably the most iconic position of this game is this. Is this. I mean, this is just nuts. Like, how is White just not mated? And I mean, like I said, Stockfish is out here trying to claim there is a win. I mean, it's so obscure, the win. It's like rookie 2, bishop d2, queen e4. Queen c2, now queen d5 is the only winning move. You allow white to go here. Rook h2 with the idea of rook h1. How is this even winning? Discovered check. King h7. It Basically, black wins on the light squares. That's like what's, what's happening here. Oh my god. I mean, this is... This is crazy. Uh, Stockfish sees it, but uh, these two bots are not strong enough to see it. I mean, how? This is... Nuts. So they draw the first game. Now, if you thought the first game was crazy, yeah, you win for a wild ride, my friends. So the second game begins, and it's a Catalan. Mittens is a Catalan connoisseur. Uh, Magnus bot plays DC, and now rather than entering all the main lines with bishop to g2, Mittens bot says, no, give me the pawn back right away with queen a4. That's called a sideline. It's not the most challenging way uh, of playing this position, but I've actually played this way with black. And uh, the positions that you get are completely fine. Uh, bishop to g2, knight bd7, and here nothing makes sense anymore. So Mittens bot undevelops its knight. The idea of this move is to pin the pawn to the bishop, making it difficult for black to develop, and also white wants to play e4, I guess. Black plays uh, bishop e7, developing. Now Mittens undevelops its queen. And the idea is to probably put the knight on d3. Oh my god, what? So it controls c5 and e5. <laughs> Queen goes to b6. Now the bishop goes in front of the e-pawn so it can permanently create threats. Knight c3 and Magnus bot is like, yo, what is the bishop doing there? And Mittens is like, yeah, my fault, that was stupid. And then you'll notice that this is under attack. You can't take it right now because rook d1 would win a knight. So Magnus bot defends his knight so that rook d1 no longer wins the knight, and Mittens just gives the pawn up anyway. Mittens gives the pawn up, black takes on d4, Mittens attacks the rook. The idea of that move is that if the rook were to move, the queen no longer can go to b6. So rook d1 removes the defense, forces the queen away, and now rook takes d7 would just be devastating, right? You would just win the game. So after bishop to c7, Magnus bot plays the only move, the only damn move. It completely ignores the threat on the rook, and it simply retreats its queen to, all the way to the corner to give away the rook and start this phase of the game. Black just gave up a rook for a bishop and a pawn. Why is the position barely equal? It's because black has a couple of things. Black has more pieces now. You see, white's pieces are going to struggle to coordinate. Black has more pieces that are active, a very powerful queen, and black has a pawn majority. So when this pawn gets here, it's going to take a lot of squares away from white. And the Magnus bot 
correctly evaluates this position as in the balance. Now, this move now is a bit of an overreaction. It gives away its bishop for the knight. I don't think Stockfish gives that a full blessing, but black comes back and now queen to b6. And watch as black just begins a fascinating peace dance here. Knight to the center. The knight drops back again to target this. Knight to the center. The horses are in the front of the whole army. Everything is well defended. White plays a3 to prevent the knight from coming to before the pawn comes forward. Black is doing everything that he needs to push this advantage, right? The bishop is going to come to c5. I mean, white's position looks awful, frankly. Knight f3, but Mittens fights back. The knight drops out of the center because he doesn't want to trade, and now e4, and this knight cannot move forward. So the knight has to go backwards. The knight goes to the outskirts of town while Mittens is attacking the structure. This is a threat you cannot take. So the king slides toward the rest of the pieces. The knight goes back. Now they could have repeated moves here. Mittens goes, no, F you. I'm not repeating moves. Uh, now black plays E5, which prevents white from pushing forward. Queen E1 back. I don't understand that move. I cannot explain this move to you. I'm very sorry. And now we see the pawn majority in action. B4, Queen C6, and c3. When I saw this, I like as a human, I'm like, okay, the two rooks don't matter anymore. I mean, this pawn is a horrible nuisance for white. Like it's terrible. And black is gonna activate his pieces, he's gonna come here. And for a for the next like 20 moves in this game, it looks like Magnus Bot just starts absolutely bullying this kitten. So Magnus Bot puts the rook and the queen behind the pawn. White is desperately creating a blockade. Look at Magnus's reroute. 98. Knight c7, knight b5, knight... Look at, look at what he does. He reroutes the horse all the way to b5. Then he brings the other knight forward. Then he brings the bishop forward. Then he glues the bishop in the center of the board. I'm like, oh, this is incredible. Look at this position. Look at this peace coordination. And yet Stockfish is sitting there, like, cigarette in hand, like evil villain in the corner, like... It's equal. It's zeros. There's nothing. Black has a nice visual position, but everything else is bad. Incredible. I mean, as a human... You just look at this, you're like, this is terrible. Well, the, the bots get a little antsy here and start doing some crazy stuff. So white starts pushing its f-pawn, targeting the knight. Black goes back, queen f3, rook e8, rook a4, targeting the bishop, targeting rook c4. Black slides the queen backwards, anticipating this move and losing the pawn on a5. Okay, but now rook a1, and now white is actually firing on the queen side. The queen drops back, the rook goes to a4, the pawn is lost. You're gonna lose that pawn. So both A pawns are gone, which means like it should be an advantage here somehow for white because white is breaking through. Remember, at the end of the day, white has a rook up for a piece. That means that in most end games, white is gonna have an advantage. And this pawn somehow has not played a role in the game. Mittens has perfectly defended. Rook back to A4, knight E6. And now Mittens understands that to make progress in this end game, it has to start breaking apart the barrier of the black position, bishop c4 is a very well-timed move. The knight on e6 has to go. Now, you may ask yourself, why is black not just taking this free pawn? Because when the position simplifies down, when everything gets traded, okay? You cannot take with the rook because of back rank mate. Um, there's this. Like, the, the pieces just, they, they lack defense. They also lack critical information. Bishop b6 takes, rook a8 check. Mittens has successfully transitioned to likely a winning endgame. This is nuts. The Mittens bot is just moments away from beating Magnus bot. Magnus bot is hanging on for dear life as he falls off the cliff. E6, sacrificing the pawn to open up the position. Now, what is Mittens bot going to do next? Queen G4 targeting the weakness. The Black King now has to defend. Rook F1 check, Knight F6. Mittens is moments away. Knight D4. The pawn doesn't need to be blockaded anymore the pawn can be taken on e6 now queen a6 only move queen h5 check the king is in the center of the board queen g5 attacks the pawn king f7 back queen c5 attacking the bishop and the pawn oh my goodness it's almost over check the white king confidently marches forward because if rook to f2 black would have played queen f2 and knight e4 look at this this is what would have happened, and black would have won the game. So king f3, bishop b8, only move. Knight c6, attacking the bishop on b8, and Magnus bot finds pawn to c2. 
giving up the bishop in the corner, checking the white king, winning the knight, and now rook f2, queen b3. And in this position, rather than taking the pawn, Mitten's bot could have tried to just create this like situation where it never takes the pawn and it tries to advance. You also, in this position, it could have taken on c2, but then black just would have gone here. And despite white having what's called a symbolic advantage on paper, for instance, there's nothing here. All the pawns in this endgame are on the same side. Literally, they are identical pawns. It's EGH. And rook versus knight isn't going to play a pivotal role, just like we saw in the last game, because there's no pawn imbalance. You see, if this pawn was here, this would be an auto win for white, because white would just push the pawn, even if this was a bishop, because you would just use your rook and pawn together. But unfortunately, or fortunately, these bots play it out. And uh, even the end of this game had a hilarious kind of twist. The white rook was trapped in the corner, and it made it to g6, and black actually gave up the pawn. This was nuts. I was looking at this like, what is black doing? What is black doing? Well, black is locking away the rook. The rook is just trapped now. It's just completely trapped. And then I was like, wait a minute. No, it's not. It's not trapped. He can do this. Oh my God. The pawn is, oh, it's defended and the king is going to come here. Wait, none of that matters. None of that matters. Why? Why does none of that matter? It looks like white should be winning in this end game, but white is not winning. Because if white plays, for instance, king e4, just king e6. There's, there's no way to win. It, it's nuts. Now, you could have also probably played king f7, king f3, king f6, king e4. There's no way through. King g7, king here, king f7, king d Like, there's just no way. Like, you can't. There's nothing you can do. The only way to get rid of the king defending the pawn would be to pr push this pawn. That's it. If you push too far, suddenly, uh, suddenly black is winning. So you got, you got to be very careful in these endgames. Uh, white tries. There is one way to lose. One way. And I will show it to you now. Uh, when I approach your position like this, or if I play a move like king f3, in this position, you cannot play the move king e6. You cannot play this. You need to meet my king e4 with a king e6. Why? Because if you play king e6 now, apologies, now... I play king e4, now you have to cede the right of passage. You either go here and I make a queen, or you go here and I win this pawn with no fight, and I never need to move this pawn. King and pawn endgames are very tricky, and uh, the bots know that. Black hangs around, ready to meet king e4 with king e6. It does meet king e4 with king e6. This is the only method forward, and now you just need to know the only move here to draw for black, king g7 or king h7. You need to get opposition here. It needs to be white's move in this position to make a draw. And that's it. Because you just have to know your king and pawn endgames. I'm not going to give you a king and pawn endgame lesson now. I got a YouTube short for that. I have a YouTube video for that. There's other YouTube videos for that. And folks, it takes 110 moves of shuffling back and forth. But ultimately, after a three-time repetition... The bots made two draws, and our first chapter of Magnus Bot versus Mittens Bot is complete. Let me know if you enjoy these videos. I don't think you're bored of Mittens Bot, be honest. These games are absurd. It's always very interesting to see which bots can beat it, which bots can't beat it. It fought to tooth and nail to the absolute death against Magnus Bot, so very interesting stuff. I greatly enjoyed these games. They were super interesting, super imbalanced playing styles, and then ultimately, like, one side pushing, the other side defending, finding the only moves. Very interesting. Honestly, I was captivated. So, yeah, Mittens Bot continues to rule the uh, YouTube algorithm for now, but uh, you can play all, you can play Mittens Bot if it's still around on um, chess.com. There is a link in my description, and uh, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun making these bots play against each other and seeing how they do it. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Get out of here.